So I want to show you a very special item here. This right here to my left is an authentic New York Yankees stadium seat, the house where Ruth built. And we all know this logo here, the New York Yankees. I just want you to think about this. I had to buy this because I'm planning on giving this to one of our top performers in our company. And the reason why I'm showing this to you is because I just want you to think about this story behind the seat. Who sat in this chair? I mean, this was there for 100 years, 80 years, 90 years. How many fans sat here and watched Babe Ruth hit a home run? Or Mickey Mantle? Or Roger Maris? Who knows what stories, how much beer has been spilled on this? Or hot dog ketchup or fights and disappointments and ninth inning full count, home run, you lose, you win, World Series. It doesn't matter what it is. When I, saw, when I see this, this just came in today, when I see this, to me it represents a lot of history. But if you're looking at this from the business standpoint, this to me represents a brand that was backed up by an entrepreneur CEO who was willing to self-promote this brand that is known as the number one brand in the world. This is the most recognized sports brand in the world because they know how to self-promote. And by the way, this brand has 26, 27 World Series championships. And this brand is worth, if you wanted to buy it, $3.4 billion. You know why? Because an entrepreneur knew how to promote this brand way before anybody else thought of the Yankees as the greatest sports organization in Major League Baseball. Some would even say any sport you think about, you think about the Yankees. Why am I starting this video this way? Well, first of all, I'm a big baseball guy and, and, and items like this fascinate me. Right now I'm in negotiation with somebody who owns a 1952 Mickey Mantle, high graded, we're talking high numbers, we're not talking a hundred thousand dollar card we're talking about a pretty expensive card I'm a fan of sports teams like this who self-promote and I think you as an entrepreneur need to figure out a way how to self-promote your business and today's video I'm gonna explain it to you in a way um, that especially to people who are because if you're cocky and you're way way too cocky maybe your approach needs to be different on how to how you self-promote but I think this message is more for the people who are uncomfortable on how to self-promote yourself and your business. And I'm gonna tell you, not only is it costing you business, not only is it costing you profits, it's hurting everybody in your company if you, yourself, don't figure out a proper way of self-promoting what you already believe in, whether it's yourself, your business, your people, your clients, your products, your vendors, your industry, your, it doesn't matter. Someone behind this brand, New York Yankees, knew how to do it. So. I'm gonna cover with you many different examples and I'll give you do's and don'ts, some things you can implement right off the bat for you to start self-promoting. So before I get into it, before I get into it, I want you to see a number here. I got four names here to my left. These are four candidates that one of them is gonna be a president in the next few days. Today is what? Today is, uh, we're a few days away from a president. I think by the time you watch this video, the video is gonna be launched on election day. This video is being launched on election day. By the time this video is done with, the first day comes out, we have a new president in America. It's either gonna be Trump, Clinton, Johnson, Stein. So many people that watch it, you already know who the president is. But this is the point I wanna make to you here. Watch this number here, watch this number here. If I ask you who Joel Stein is, I am willing to bet 90% of you have no idea who Joel Stein is. If I ask you who Gary Johnson is, I'm willing to bet 80% of you have no idea who Joel Stein is. If I was to ask you, do you know who Hillary Clinton or Trump is, I am willing to bet 99.9999% of you know who Clinton and Trump is. Do you know why? Because these two know how to self-promote, these two don't know how to self-promote. It doesn't mean their argument isn't strong. It just means they're terrible at self-promotion. Let me give you some stats here for you to be thinking about. Jill Stein has 261,000 followers on Twitter. Gary Johnson, libertarian, she represents the Green Party. You notice it's green, Gary Johnson's yellow libertarian. He's got 397,000 followers on Twitter. She's got 10.1 million. Trump's got 12.9 million Twitter followers. Brand-wise, he's by far the best self-promoter in the marketplace. Obviously, you see the Trump brand all over the place. Whether you like him or not, there's a lot to be learned from anybody because on the complete opposite side here, uh, Ali, who's Sports Illustrator, said the greatest athlete of the last century, 
he said, I'm the greatest. And he came out saying it when he didn't believe it. And then he delivered and then he became the greatest. Ali, right? We just lost him this past year. You think about TBE, the best ever, Mayweather, the money team. I'm the best ever. I'm the best ever. So many people hate Mayweather. So many people love Mayweather. The reality is he never lost. I'm not a Mayweather fan. Many of you know if you followed me. But guess what? The guy was undefeated. He called himself the best ever. And I think the last fight he had with uh, Pacquiao, what was it, $200 million bout? How much money did you make on that fight? Think about that for a moment here. Jordan on this side, the greatest of all time. Prime time, Deion Sanders, number 21. You know, when he said, there's nobody, I don't care what position, Dennis was telling me, if you tell me any position, quarterback, whatever, there will never ever be a better cornerback as good as me because I'm the best ever number 21. You look at more brands, Cowboys, $4 billion company, the most expensive sports franchise in the world is Cowboys. Then you have Barcelona, Real Madrid, then you have the Yankees here, Nike, self-promotion, Apple, self-promotion. These are people who know how to promote their brand and today they're learning how to promote themselves. So if you, if you yourself, don't make a decision from watching this video how to self-promote yourself and how to self-promote your brand, I guarantee you, you will be left behind. So let's go through a couple different points here on uh, thinking about uh, self-promotions and how not to do it and how to do it. By the way, just think about it for a moment here with even LeBron James. For the longest time, LeBron James didn't want to answer what question. What's the question? The question was, hey, are you better than Michael Jordan? He would always say what? He would say, oh, you know, Mike's the greatest of all time. Why would you even ask the question? You know, why would you even ask the question? And do you know what he started saying this year? What did he start saying this year in an interview? Do you know what he said? I'm chasing the what? The ghost. I'm chasing the ghost. Who's the ghost? Michael Jordan. Why? Because Michael Jordan's the greatest of all time. And LeBron wants to say what? Guess what? I think I may be the greatest of all time. I've been to seven or eight, and he's only been a six. Yes, he won six for six, but I never had a Pippen on a Horace Grant. He's making an argument. I make everybody else stronger. Jordan was himself. All of those stats he's putting up to say I'm the greatest of all time. By the way, do I think he's going to be the greatest of all time? I don't think he will be the greatest of all time. But you know what I do like? I love the fact that he said it. Finally, he said it. Kobe said it. He put himself on the line. You got to be able to have the audacity to say it as well. But there are certain things you got to do before you say it. So keep in mind, let's identify something before I get into my 11 points. What is the difference between self-promotion and bullshitting? What is the difference between self-promotion and bullshitting? Self-promotion can be backed up. Bullshitters can't back up. Big difference. So a lot of the, a lot of the uh, 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 introverts who don't like to self-promote because they're like, man, I don't want to come across as a bullshitter. If you know what you're doing, don't worry about it. Self-promote if you know how to deliver. Don't worry about it. And I'll give you a formula today on how to do it so you're not going to feel uncomfortable about how to go out there and you know, self-promote yourself. You know this whole statement that we hear about fake it till you make it, fake it till you make it, fake it till you make it. We hear it all the time. Well, fake it till you make it. Well, it, yes, fake it till you make it, but you better know what the hell you're doing while you're on the way of faking it till you make it. Because if you don't know what you're doing, you're just fake, period. You're just fake, period. The whole act as if. You can act as if, but you better know what you're doing while you're acting as if. There's got to be a part of you that knows what you're doing. So, how do you self-promote yourself? How do you self-promote yourself? Rule number one, you got to be shameless about self-promoting yourself. You got to be shameless about self-promoting yourself. You can't be uncomfortable when you're self-promoting yourself. You got to be shameless. I guarantee you Dion's shameless, Ali's shameless, Mayweather's shameless, Steinbrenner and Yankees, he was one of the recent owners who passed away and passed it over to his son, shameless, Apple shameless, Nike Phil Knight shameless, Cowboys Jerry Jones shameless, Trump shameless, Clinton shameless, Little bit shyer, but they're still more shameless than the rest of the people in the world. You got to be shameless. If you're not shameless, no one's going to know who you are. And a part of why we don't want to be shameless is because we're embarrassed if we're humiliated. So what if you're humiliated? You know who's not humiliated? Do you know who's not humiliated? The people no one knows anything about. You tell me what's more humiliating than what happened with Trump. You tell me what's more humiliating than what happened with Clinton. Tell me. You tell me what's more humiliating when Ali said I'm going to knock out Frazier, and Frazier knocked him out. You tell me what's more humiliating than that. You tell me what's more humiliating than Michael Jordan when he got the pass and the steal and Nick Anderson from the pass, and he passes the ball to Scottie Pippen, and Scottie Pippen in the interview, when he makes a comeback in the playoffs, they lose to Orlando Magic, 
In the interview, Scotty says, Jordan's never given me the ball. I couldn't believe it. He had to go that entire season, everyone saying Jordan's lost his... It's shame. you got to be shameless. you got to be shameless. There's got to be a part of you that's got to be shameless. Number one. Number two. You tell your victories through personal stories. Let me explain. For instance, let's just say, um, you know, you are an alumni from, I don't know, from... Uh, Pick a school, Yale, okay? And so you're sitting with a client and saying, you know, it's interesting. Uh, uh, I, I like the fact that you are a Yankees fan because one of my good friends who uh, I knew when I went to Yale together, he was also a big Yankees fan. And I remember when, ta 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 did you see what just happened right there? Now the client is saying what? Oh, wow, you went to Yale. But you didn't say, oh, let me show you my degree that I went to Yale. You don't do it that way. You connect and then you talk about what you did, right? Self-promotion. Here's another way. Um, you know, man, this is a impressive plaques. I mean, listen, one thing I can tell you is for somebody like yourself who I see here being recognized as a top attorney, it takes a lot of uh, work to get that, you know, because uh, I respect that because in our company, when I got my plaque for the top uh, broker of our company, I remember the effort it took to get there. And for what's crazy is many times people don't see the efforts behind closed doors. So I applaud you for what you did. Did you see what just happened right there? There's a linkage of self-promotion. Okay, there's a linkage of self-promotion. So there's a way you do it. I have a friend of mine who's a doctor who has a hard time talking about the fact that he's a doctor. This guy grew up in Inglewood and everybody around him was either blood crypt. The prime time of colors is when this guy grew up in that area. He comes out of that mess, he goes to school, gets his, he gets, becomes a doctor himself and he doesn't want to say he's a doctor because he feels like he's bragging. There's a way of doing it where it's, it can be subtle through stories. Number two, you're only as good as your last victory. So let me explain what, that, what I mean by this. If you're talking about your victory from 28 years ago, you're Al Bundy. And if you don't know what Al Bundy is, back in the days there used to be a show on TV. What was it called? It was called what? Uh, uh, Married with Children. Married with Children. And the main star, his name is Al Bundy, and he would always talk about how he threw four touchdowns in high school when they won the championships, and he was in his 50s, okay? And everyone said, people who talk about high school victories, they're Al Bundy's. Don't talk about victories from 22 years ago. You gotta talk about your most recent victories. No one cares about 16 years ago, unless if you're a grandpa and you're telling your story to your grandkids, and I was 39 years ago. If you're in the hunt today, building it, competing, you gotta talk about your recent victories that you have. Number three. One of the ways you self-promote is you build up other people. That's strange because a lot of times people think you self-promote by knocking other people down. And there may be some conflicting ideas here because some of these people are experts at knocking the other people down, right? You say, hey, uh, Ali used to say, you look like a mummy. He looks like a mummy, right? When you hear Ali talk all his smack, he's the ugliest man I've ever met in my life. I've never met a man uglier than him, right? He would say all these types of stuff. Mayweather would try to do that. Jordan was very big when he was talking smack in the game. But there's an element of you building other people up while you're building your business. I remember when we were selling memberships at Bally Total Fitness and I had just come to a new club at Bally's and everybody there was accustomed to selling the memberships by bashing 24-hour fitness. They would bash 24-hour fitness and I told everybody, listen, stop, we're no longer bashing 24-hour fitness. They said, why? So let me explain to you why we're not gonna bash. Here's what we're gonna be doing. So people would come and I would say, so let me ask you, uh, how much you know about Bally Total Fitness and what other gyms are you looking at? Oh, you know what, I've looked at you guys and 24-Hour Fitness. What do you like about 24-Hour Fitness? I like the fact that 24-Hour Fitness doesn't have a contract. Okay, aside from that, what else is important? Is distance important to you? Well, yes, what's closer to your house? Uh, 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 Bally Total Fitness or 24-Hour Fitness? They would say, well, I live a block away from Bally's. I said, so how far is 24-Hour Fitness from you? Nine miles. How much of a drive does it take in traffic? About 30 minutes. How long does it take to come over here? They would say five minutes. I said, so that's about 25 minutes difference going and coming back. So it's 50 minutes, right? I said, it's 50 minutes times three times a week that you're planning on coming to the gym. That's 150 minutes a week, 600 mi uh, minutes per month. Is that worth more than $5 a month for you? And they would say, well, you know, it's, it is. I said, so you want to go to 24-hour fitness and you're willing to give up 600 minutes per month just for $5 less, just for no agreement? Isn't time more important to you than a price on a down payment or memberships? Of course it is. I said, because 24-Hour Fitness is a great gym. They have a lot of great things going on. But I will tell you one thing about why people join Valley Total Fitness here. Because we like committed members. 
because our members who are close to us, we're, we're located in a perfect location. We intentionally chose certain real estate properties because we want to save time for you because we want you to go home and spend time with your kids and your wife. That's important to us. But we still want you to stay in shape. Does that make sense? Yes, but we got the contract. So they come on board and the contract is done. So build other people up. Sometimes you got to ask, hey, so tell me about the competitors, what you like about them. They do a lot of great things. Let me tell you what we do. What's more important to you? Ta, 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 ta. And then you self-promote your business based on what the needs are of the client out there. Number four, make some predictions. Make some predictions, okay? I predict dot, dot, dot is going to take place, okay? For instance, I just made a prediction a couple days ago on a uh, Twitter video, and uh, I told everybody what my thoughts are on Twitter. I may be completely wrong, but I feel, based on the research I've done and the intuition I have, I feel something's going to happen with Twitter, and there's a reason why their valuation went from being a $40 billion company to today, no one even wants to pay them a $10 billion company. Not Apple, not Salesforce, not Google. They all were interested at one time. No one wants to buy them. So I made my predictions about Twitter. If you haven't seen the video, you can go see the video. The video is titled, uh, Is Twitter the Next MySpace? Or something like that. Let's put a link of it or a video uh, image of it so they can see it. Make some predictions based on your intuition and based on research. Why is that important? Well, what if some of your predictions become a reality? Okay, then you have credibility. Because when you say what's going to take place, it becomes a reality. Just make sure you're not making things up based on no nonsense opinion. Then you're like everybody else. You can't self-promote that because then your decisions are not that accurate. Now, some people might say, what a dumb advice, Pat. Are you really telling people to make some predictions? Yeah, that's kind of what great real estate developers do. That's kind of what great real estate investors do. That's kind of what great stockbrokers do. They say, I think this is what's going to happen with the market. And if you want to position yourself, I foresee dot, dot, dot taking place. So why not you do it? Hey, I foresee the economy and the marketplace going dot, dot, dot in this area. And I think you need to position yourself here. I think you're smart if you do this. I wrote a book called The Next Perfect Storm specifically for the life insurance industry. I'm not recommending you read it. It's for my industry, the life insurance industry. I wrote the book with the prediction I made on what I foresee happening in the marketplace in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. All these insurance companies read it and they wanted to partner up with us. Why? Because they said, this makes sense. Don't be afraid to make some predictions within your industry, your own marketplace that you have going on. Next thing, name dropping. Let me talk about name dropping. There are ways you do name dropping that is absolutely annoying and it backfires. It's absolutely annoying and it backfires. Let me give you the simplest one. Don't name drop if you don't know the person, okay? So for instance, if you say something like, oh, you know what, man, I'm good friends with Beyonce. Oh, really? Oh, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, you know, Beyonce and I. And all you ever did is you went to a concert and Beyonce was there with 30,000 other people. You claim you're friends because you're friends with her on Facebook because you're a fan and you follow her on Twitter. That's not, you're not friends, right? But some people like to say that. Oh, you know, you know, uh, I got to tell you about this story. With If you're going to name drop, do it in a subtle way but you better validate it. People have done that to me, and once they couldn't validate it, it completely lost their credibility. One of the reasons why I left the former company is because there was somebody there that kept name dropping, and they never became a reality. Eventually, everybody said, this guy's full of it. I like credibility. I like for you to say it, and it becomes a reality. So now, if you do name drop, for instance, um, yeah, you know, John, this is a, this is a great uh, um, um, uh, opportunity to sit down with you and talk to you. You know, one of the things I liked is you kind of remind me uh, of Steinbrenner. Back in the days, I used to work for the Yankees. And when I worked for the Yankees, I moved up in a company and I started working with uh, Mr. Steinbrenner. I traveled a lot with he and his family. And uh, it was a great experience, but you and him have a very similar presence together. And it's great to meet you. I've heard a lot of good things about you. Okay? There is a connection. Now, if he goes back and he finds out that never happened, you lose the deal. But if he goes back and finds out that happened, man, credibility, come on in. What do we need to do? So you call back. He's always going to link you. He, no one's ever going to say it. But you call back. Who's calling? Billy Bob. Oh, Billy Bob Steinbrenner guy. Yes. Bring him in. So now what if you don't tell that story? You wasted an opportunity to self-promote, a, a good opportunity. Here's another one to uh, how to uh, drop. Instead of name drop, book drop. What's book drop? When you're talking, when you're a very well reader, if you're well read, okay, uh, uh, I've read quite a lot of business books. So if I'm sitting there with a meeting 
and somebody says something in a meeting, and I'll say, you know what, one of the books I read was such and such, and in this book it talks about this, and I feel like this is what's going on here with the company, and I recommend that book to you, oh, and you'll see them. Every time you'll see someone, if they're sharp, they go, what was the book's name again? Da, 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 da. And yeah, and you know what, I remember one time when another topic comes up, I read a book once called this, if you can give two to three book recommendations in a business conversation with somebody, in their mind, they're linking you to a self-educated, autodidact, you don't wait, and you're constantly trying to feed information to yourself because you're a self-educated person. Whether you have a degree or not, it's irrelevant. In their mind, you're educated. Not, they're not saying in their mind you have a degree. In their mind, they're saying you're educated, you want knowledge. So book drop sometimes, not just name drop. Book drop sometimes. Next, um, strong opinions about certain subjects within your field of expertise. So it's similar to what I said earlier on making predictions, but this is strong opinions. It's not necessarily predictions. You're making opinions. I don't agree with where the marketplace is going. I think one of the mistakes the industry made was that, that, that. I think they could have done this better or they could have done this better. This even helps if you have your own blog or your own vlog or your own podcast or your own whatever you write where people are seeing your thoughts. And they say, you know, I wrote this one blog about this and I can send it to you, they can read it. And in this blog, uh, it, it created a lot of uh, uh, you know, controversy because my belief in it was you know, such and such. So for instance, for me, uh, four years ago, I wrote an article why I don't believe home ownership Home ownership is not the American dream. This thing blew up. Uh, Fox contacted me, CNN contacted me, everybody contacted me. Then Denver Post, that I think is a number 15 publication in America, did a feature on it. And they sent me the paper, the frame is somewhere around here, I don't know where it is, it's somewhere around here. If you go type in Denver Post by David. And the whole feature was they came, pictures, all this stuff. This entrepreneur doesn't believe in home ownership. That was my opinion. It created so much controversy just because I did one video on YouTube saying why, what the real American dream is. And I said it's not home ownership, it's entrepreneurship, right? Create a lot of debate. Share your thoughts, share your, share your opinions, and self-promote those articles that you've written. Next, have a certain level of certainty on what you're talking about. People will know the difference between certainty and somebody who is not certain. Believe me, it's not that hard to know when somebody is certain about what they're talking about. You. You, uh, uh, initially when we started doing channels, people would say, Pat, do you read a teleprompter? Do you have a teleprompter that you go through? I don't have teleprompters. I can't speak about these things with you if it's not fresh here because I can store these episodes in my brain and remember everything I'm telling you. Just like people can tell if you know what you're talking about with level of certainty if you're feeding this thing. And the more with certainty you talk about, your certainty alone is a way of self-promoting yourself. Your level of certainty is a level of self-promotion that you're having. Next one. To young and new entrepreneurs, a lot of times now people will say, well, Pat, how about if I'm a young entrepreneur, how do I self-promote myself if I don't have any victories? How about if I, I don't have anything? What am I going to self-promote myself when I'm dealing with some people? Very simple. Everybody started off not having anything to self-promote themselves with except for, except for the following. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, if there's one thing I could tell you is, uh, I don't know many people who are as committed, hardworking, in their trade as much as I am. I can tell you this. Um, the industry, I'm gonna make a lot of a, a positive impact in people's lives. I take this thing very, very seriously. I take my clients' times very, very seriously. This is why people like doing business with me. This means a lot to me. The fact that you open your doors to me, it means you trust me to come into your house and present different options to you. That means a lot to me and I don't take that for granted. That is very important to me. So I want you to know I'm very serious, I'm very dedicated about what I'm doing. And my plans are in the next 10 years to open up seven new offices. My plans in the next 10 years are to be able to take my client's business from XYZ to ABC. My plans in the next five to 10 years to be able to do this and I'm hoping you can be one of those clients I can do this great work for with a lot of discipline and dedication. Hopefully you'll give me the opportunity to deliver for you. Certainty, commitments, where you're going, you better deliver. If you don't, you are not a self-promoter that's going places. You're a bullshitter. You gotta, you gotta deliver. You gotta deliver. If you keep changing, 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 changing what you're selling, zero credibility. This is why I say choose one thing for 10 years. Choose one thing for 10 years and stick to it for 10 years. So now, uh, do's and don'ts. Don't overdo it. It's annoying. Don'ts. Don't overdo it. It's annoying. Don't make things up. I already told you this. Let me explain what I mean by uh, don't overdo it. Ladies, Think about it if you go on a date with a guy who he constantly brags about himself and 80% of the time he's talking, 20% of the time you're talking. 
That's, you don't like that. Who likes that? No one likes that, right? There isn't a single person that likes, well, let me tell you who I am. You know, oh yeah, you know, I know everybody. I go to that nightclub, the bar, you know, the owners know who I am. Every time I go out at the table, they give me the bottle. You're annoying. That's not attractive. That's annoying. You're hiding an insecurity. There's something you are not comfortable about yourself. Everyone can tell. Everyone can tell. Then there's the guy that just says, oh, great, yeah, no problem, awesome, yeah. But he still self-promotes himself. Here's why. Ladies, I'm going to talk to you first, and gentlemen, I'm going to talk to you. Ladies, honestly, did you really end up liking a guy who didn't self-promote himself? Honestly. Honestly. Are you dating a man that somehow, someway didn't self-promote himself? Come on. Come on. You didn't self-promote yourself? What do you think makeup is? Makeup is self-promotion. What do you think shaving legs is? What do you think us shaving our goatee is? What do you think us getting our hair done? That's self-promotion. What do you think it is to cologne? Self-promotion. What do you think it is to work out? Self-promotion. What do you think it is to take care of our body? Self-promotion. How about you? Self-promotion. Self-promotion. When my wife and I were, date, uh, were dating, and we, were, we went through the process of fighting. It was after about, you know, the first six months, everyone bullshits. It's not a real relationship. It's fake. The first six months is fake. It's Hollywood. It's not real. Don't believe it. Everyone lies in the first six months. I love you so much. Here's a dozen roses. And then nine months later, what dozen roses, man? Oh, I love you. The toes are always perfectly done. Every time, like they get their toes on every day. Eight months later, what happened? There's cracks on the toes. What happened here? Self-promotion is gone. The reality sets in, oh, I didn't get a chance to get my toes done. And, and they're kind of walking. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what happened to those toes, man? They were nice toes. Self-promotion is gone, right? A little bit. Watch this. Stay with me here. My wife and I are together for about a year. I haven't proposed yet. And we get into a very big fight. You know what she tells me? Let me tell you what she tells me. She says, don't you get it? No woman is ever going to treat you as good as I'm going to treat you. No one is. No woman. Don't you understand that? She said this to me. Watch when she said this to me. She said this to me in 08. She has, she's going to watch this on the video, and she has no clue I even said this. I'm going to show it because she watches the video. She has no idea I said this. That had an influence over me proposing to her. Think about that. Even my wife is a self-promoter. Think about it. So none of us here are too good to be, and it's not, it's righteous, it's also, stop. The only difference between you and some of these other bigger guys, they just self-promote better than you. And they work harder to be able to deliver. So my message is very simple to you here. Go back, watch this video again, take some notes, make a decision for yourself, what type of a brand do you want to build? Are you going to be a brand like these guys that they build a brand where a guy like me, an entrepreneur, is willing to pay thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars just to own a seat of the Yankees where Babe Ruth built, the house where Babe Ruth built to give this away as a recognition for what? Just because somebody knew how to self-promote this brand. And don't be the entrepreneur that doesn't go and do this because you will miss out on so many opportunities if you don't self-promote yourself. So let's get this here. If you got any questions, thoughts, comment on the bottom. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so. Let me tell you something here about this channel. We have a lot of great things we'll be launching here soon. This channel is going to be a million subscriber channel. Our plan is to get this to a million and many, many more after that. I don't believe there's a single channel on YouTube that talks about the subject of entrepreneurship better than us. Yes, I'm self-promoting, but I dare you to challenge us against anybody else. No one. There's a lot of guys that keep saying the same rebuttal. Same thing, same thing, same thing, same thing, same thing, same thing, just in a different way. But there's no content, no substance. I take your time seriously. I go a little bit longer with my videos because if I only go for two, three minutes, it's just motivation. I want to give you value where you get off the phone, you take notes, you implement it, you grow your business, and I get the messages of people telling me I was only doing 80 grand last year, my business is not doing $6 million per year. I was only doing $300,000 per year, I'm not doing $693,000 per year. Those are the messages I want to hear, but this only happens if you take this content and apply it. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Share this video with some other people that need to watch this as well. And with that being said, then it's good catch. Thanks for watching everybody. Take care, bye-bye.